All right, this is the last one of this set. And let's think about the problem of art, censorship, and mythology. What we're seeing from Plato is that art and mythology are connected. Myth, remember, is just the Greek word for story. So Plato wants to control the stories that the people of the Republic are told. Because if they're misled by bad art or bad stories, they might get confused and love the wrong things. Remember, the goal is to maintain a well-ordered love affair with the forms. If anybody loves anything more than the forms, those people will be miserable. If the state pursues anything in greater and, uh, um, with greater interest than in the forms, that state will then collapse as well. So we have this noble lie, the lie that Plato says everybody has to be told. But Plato tells a similar lie to a soldier's class. And he says, in fact, soldiers can only be allowed to reproduce with the best possible soldiers. So in his mind, the noble lie also is attributed to some degree to who has sex and who has children with whom. And he calls this, um, yet again, another lie. This is the lie of the soldiers. And he says that soldiers are given a holiday where they get to choose straws. And whoever has the short straws are allowed to have children together. But of course the game is fixed to begin with, so only the best soldier man and the best soldier woman are able to have the right straws and their children will be, then be, uh, will be born. Those children are immediately taken away from them and raised by the state. Now why in the world would anybody agree to such a terrible thing? He says, well of course this makes sense because there is a whole mythology of course that, in, that um, in, embraces this kind of thinking. And he eventually then goes so far as to say that the children will be raised by the state and nobody will be able to distinguish their child from anybody else's child and so the whole state will love every child as if every child is every single person's. Now this doesn't apply for the working class. So Plato already has within his story the idea of eugenics. Only the best dogs will have the best puppies. And that's really why he talks, we will raise our guardians like dogs. That's how he describes it. So art is extremely important. Art is what determines our values, our desires, our interests, not only from the way that the state functions, but in our own most intimate personal lives. This is driven by art, and art should be under the domain of the state. So the state determines what stories you tell. Now, Plato thinks about this in light of a Greek myth that the Greeks all knew, and Plato said would never be allowed in his state. And it's a story that I'll tell you a little bit of scene. And it's the story about the birth of um, Aphrodite. So, this story, Plato thinks, is so obscene that these poets will never be allowed to tell the story. He talks about how the Homeric poets can come to his city and they can stay for dinner, but if they don't leave, they'll just kill him. That's in the third book of the Republic. He talks about the necessity of censorship. So here's the story that really bothers him. He says, here, um, in the beginning there was Gaia, and Gaia was the, uh, the first goddess of earth, and all things that within, since she was so fertile, all things grew within her. And her youngest, her first son's name was Uranus. And Uranus is born and looks upon his mother and lies upon her and keeps her pregnant with all these babies but will never get off her and she swells inside. Now this story is told, this is actually written down, you can look it up. It's in a book by Hesiod, H-E-S-I-O-D. Hesiod, or Hesiod, and it's called the Theogony. And in Hesiod's Theogony, he says, so Mother Earth is very mad that his, her oldest son is lying on top of her, having sex all the time, not letting her have any children. And eventually she creates a magical metal called adamant, and she gives it to her youngest son, Kronos. And Kronos, the word sounds familiar, I guess. Kronos, chronology, time. So Uranus is actually the sky god. Gaia is the earth god. And Kronos is the time god. And Kronos is given a sickle, the shape of the sickle moon. And he takes that sickle, Kronos, and he castrates his father and throws his genitals over his shoulder. And his genitals land into the sea, and they float up on the beach of Cyprus to become Aphrodite. And you may have seen the picture by Botticelli, The Birth of Venus. This is an appalling story. And Plato says, how in the world can the gods behave like this if they're gods? Gods are perfect. They don't castrate each other and kill one another and do horrible things like this. The gods don't change their shapes. If a god is perfect, the god is perfect. It keeps the same shape forever. So he thinks these stories do nothing but disturb the imagination of the people. And a disturbed imagination then, of course, leads its way up the chain so people get confused about what they're supposed to love. So he wants to throw all of these terrible myths out. So let's apply this to our state. Do you think Plato would like to have Britney Spears? Certainly not. How about um, any of the strange art, hip-hop, that we listen to? Absolutely not, because these are things that would corrupt the morals of the state. People would then begin to lust after the lowest things rather than pursue the highest things. So in Plato's ideal state, all music would actually be marching music. All, um, all art would be art that is a perfect representation of the most beautiful aspects of nature. And there would never would anyone 
pretend to be something less than they are, all people in their art would aspire to be something greater than they are. So Plato would see that bad art is the beginning of the downfall of the state. We in our contemporary democracy, thankfully, do not think that's true. We think that art actually gives us new ways to investigate the world, new ways to understand the world. For Plato, art is always only an imitation of the material world. And since most art is bad art, it's a bad imitation of the material world. However, there is some art, for example, the art that Plato himself proposes, such as the allegory of the case, which is itself a story, such as the divided line, which is itself a story, such as the analogy of the chariot, which is itself a story. He says these are good art, because this particular, these are examples, I'm sorry, of good art, because these are examples of art that represent the perfect forms. So for Plato, art has to be under control of the state because it's the art which ultimately is essential for our understanding our location. Here's the best part of the story. Art and religion are absolutely interconnected. At some point you may be fortunate enough to take a class in art history, and you will see that the early iconography, the art and religion are absolutely conjoined. That comes directly out of Plato. Art should reflect God and never reflect that which is below God. And this is something which we no longer think to be the case, and I think we're right and they're wrong. But think about whether or not a little censorship might be a good thing. And that, my dears, is what your final paper is going to be on. Or your paper, the next paper, your first paper is going to be on. Your first paper is going to be on, should art be censored? And if so, so to what degree should we censor art in our country? Thanks a lot. That's it. See you next week.